Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here at Lemex, courtesy of its owner, Alexander Logar, who was kind enough to give me access to some of the extremely rare and cool firearms in his reference collection, including this MG08-18. This was going to be one of Germany's improved special new weapons for the spring campaign of 1919 at the end of World War I. Except, of course, the war ended up ending in, well, the fall of 1918. What we have here is an improvement on the MG 0815 to make it lighter and more portable, where in turn the 0815 was an improvement on the MG 08 to make it lighter and portable at all. Now right off the bat I will tell you that this gun is missing a couple of parts. It's missing the fusee cover, which you can't see because it's on the back, and more substantially it's missing the bipod. This originally used a standard MG0815 bipod with a basically just a clamp adapter that went around the barrel shroud right here and was held in place by a thumb screw. So unfortunately that's missing. But these guns are so scarce that I wasn't going to turn down the opportunity to film one of them for you. Um, development was really pretty simple. It's just a matter of take the MG0815 and replace the water cooling jacket with a perforated air cooling jacket. Now you might wonder if you're going to turn this into an air cooled gun, as they did, why have a jacket at all? And the answer is because this is a Maxim pattern gun where you have to have this booster at the end because you actually have basically pressure generated here that pushes the barrel backwards so that it will fire and cycle. So you have to have something out here to hold this booster in place. That's why it's required at all. Now originally the idea of the Maxim guns was that the water cooling allows you to have a very thin barrel, uh, but a tremendous sustained fire capability because the water absorbs all the heat from firing. Well. The attempt was made with the 0815 and then the 0818 to turn the Maxim into essentially a portable light machine gun fired off a bipod. And in that role it didn't need to have the sustained fire capability of the original tripod mounted Maxims. So an air cooled barrel would suffice. These are in fact the same uh, profile of barrel as the standard 0815s. Um, this is a project that was undertaken at the very end of the war under uh, very significant economic and well stress on society in all ways. Um, Germany was being ground to powder by World War I and this was an attempt to simplify so they did as little as possible to actually change the system. From here back this is identical to an MG0815. Uh, actually with the exception of the butt stock. So let's take a closer look at this and let me show you the couple of modifications that there are to make the 0818. So like I said, basically from here back this is identical to an 0815 with the exception of a reinforcement to the buttstock. So what we have is the same pattern of buttstock. It's still, it's just got a, a checkered wooden butt plate. There is no separate butt plate, it's just the back of it is checkered and wooden. You've got a slot for the sling, but the actual attachment of the stock has been made significantly stronger. So there's now much, a much deeper uh, metal plug in here, a couple of cross pins to hold it in place. And the stock is now actually dovetailed onto the rear receiver plate. So you can see the over travel pin right there, the grooves that it slides in. You can see the grooves up here on top as well. And on the left side you have a spring tab here. You lift that up and then you can slide the buttstock off. This one is very very tight on the gun and so I don't want to try to hammer it off, but that is how you would actually remove the buttstock. On the 0815s you had a much uh, smaller socket on the back here and the, the stock was screwed directly into this rear receiver plate. Here are our top cover markings. So serial number 141 and that's repeated on basically all of the parts. Uh, as you would expect on one of these. MG08-18 uh, and then Gewehr Fabrique Erfurt, the Erfurt Arsenal, manufactured in 1918. Now the way they did this at the front was to reconfigure uh, the front end of the receiver just slightly, where you would originally have had an attachment for the water jacket. They now have a cross bolt right there. Goes through to right here. Uh, and that is holding on this perforated barrel shroud. So you can see the line right here where that's a separate component. 
that slots in and is held in place by this bolt. It has a couple of features built into it. It's got a carry handle here. This is your front sling attachment position. Uh, so it would use the same sling as the 0815, uh, same configuration and all. The front sight is on a nice tall tower because uh, it has to be set up to be the same height as the original water-cooled sight because the rear sight is mounted on the top cover of the gun and it can't get any lower. So that's your front sight. It's offset slightly to the left because the rear sight is as well. Originally to clear things like the water jacket uh, fill plug on the on the top of the jacket. And then we have basically a standard booster at the front. That's the same booster that you would have on the 0815. These were not actually put into service after World War II. Um, this project, this development was abandoned and the German army went back to the 0815s, which they would modify and upgrade and continue to use even through World War II. Um, however, there is a development that came from this. If that barrel shroud looks a bit familiar, it's because that was the basis of development for the MG34. While these weren't actually used in service, uh, they were around and people remembered them. And when MG34 development began and they needed an air-cooled perforated barrel shroud, this was a readily available model that was already around and already easily usable. So things like the patterning of the holes, the dimensions of the tube in general, um, this is what directly led into development of the MG34. With the removal of the water jacket and re replacement with a nice much lighter cooling shroud, uh, the 0818 came in at a, a total weight of 14.5 kilograms, which dropped about 3 kilos off of the 0815, plus an additional 3 kilos of water that would have been in the 0815 jacket, which were not necessary, of course, for the air-cooled gun. So really a pretty substantial improvement in mobility. Now, the MG-08, the Maxim gun, is still not a good basis for a portable light machine gun, but this is really as good as anyone managed to make it for that role. As the name implies, this was fielded in 1918, late in the war. I don't know that any of these actually saw field service. Very few of them were made. Uh, you know, this is number 141. The one in the pattern room is in the 300s. Uh, they were all manufactured by the Erfurt Arsenal, but this is one of those guns, like the Pedersen device for the Americans, like the RSC 1918 carbine for the French, like the Tank und Fliegergewehr, the 50 caliber Maxim guns uh, for the Germans. One of those weapons that never actually, never had a chance to make any impact on the war, wasn't used. This would have been for the spring 1919 offensive. Really, nobody expected that the war was actually going to end in late 1918. They all thought it would continue to the next season's big spring pushes. Well, it was the, the the Americans coming into the war that made it essential for the Germans to make one last desperate attempt to win the war because with American troops coming over in just accelerating numbers, if the Germans didn't pull off something in 1918, it was extremely unlikely that they would be able to in 1919. So, anyway. We don't need to get into the whole history of World War I. Uh, a big thanks to Lemex and Mr. Logar for having access to this gun to show to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.